right, everybody. Chad the Gaming Dad here with you on Dad's Games, and this is going to be the new way that I select what games to review. Now, keep in mind, my reviews are going to be very short, and I'm not going to go into super detail about a lot of things. Pretty much just going to give you the gist of it. So here we go. Got my iPhone in hand, and you see, I'm, I watch, live screen. See it moving? This is a live, live screen. And what I'm going to do is this app, you've seen the review on the collecting app for the iPhone, and it has this shake to select feature. And I'm scared to death because I'm putting the, the fate of what I have to do for videos on my channel in the, in the hands of this app. It's crazy. Oh boy. So here we go. I'm going to shake the phone. Shake, shake, shake. Whew. All right. I'm really nervous about this. And I'm going to do it live. I'm not going to edit this at all. I'm well, do it live! Do it live! I'm just going to do straight so you guys know that I'm just going to pick whatever it shakes out. So here we go. You see it shaking? You see it shaking? You see it shaking? Stop. Are you kidding me? The little... The Little Mermaid on NES. This is what it picks for me? <laughs> Wow, there it is. The Little Mermaid. Might have to ask, here. Might have to ask my daughter to help me out with this one. The Little Mermaid on NES. So it's time to break out the NES and play some Little Mermaid. And we're going to do a Little Mermaid review. Wow. See why I was scared? We're about to go under the sea. So here we are, Under the Sea. The Little Mermaid movie was a huge hit in 1989, and this game hit stores in July of 1991. You know, this was another of the pretty good Capcom slash Disney games for the NES, kind of like DuckTales and the Chip and Dale game. But is it really any good? Well, when I shook the phone and got this for my game, I was thinking I was in trouble, and sort of, I was. You see, Contrary to popular belief, I'm not a little girl who wishes that she was Ariel, kind of like my five-year-old daughter. So naturally, I was a little reluctant to dive into this game. The story starts off a bit different from the movie. You see Ariel with Eric, and it appears that she is currently human. Pretty much the end of the movie, right? But then her old buddies come around and tell her that Ursula is making the fish do things that she wants and will probably take over the sea. Probably? Come on, Ariel. You don't think for a minute that a crab, fish, and bird might be overreacting a little bit? No, no, no. Good old Ariel. She just says, later, dude, and somehow now has the ability to change back to mermaid at will. She dives back in the ocean, leaving Loverboy alone and brokenhearted. So you start off as Ariel, and the first thing I notice is that the color palette seems to be missing the color red. I mean, the mermaid has red hair, right? You would think red would be a good color to include? But nope, we get purple. Purple hair, purple hearts, purple backgrounds, purple power-ups. But wait, oh, there's some red enemies. What? They included red for the enemies but didn't use it for Ariel's hair? Or the hearts? Oh well. Old NES games, you know? What are you gonna do? Now back to the hearts. Why do they start us with three full hearts and two empty hearts? If we need to pick up more hearts later on, couldn't they just appear? Like in Zelda or something? It's like this way they show you the hearts, but the missing ones make you feel like you already got hit and lost health right when you start. Alright, okay. Enough nitpicking. Just a game, right? So let's go. So you take control of Ariel. There are shells to pick up. These can open chests or be thrown at enemies. You need the shells to get the powers from the chests, though. You can flip your fin and make a bubble around some enemies and throw them at other enemies. But these bad guys in a bubble will not open chests. You pretty much need to save the shells to open the chests, otherwise you're going to be stuck with no power-ups. So you get the chest open, and you either get more power for your bubble, or longer range for your bubble. 
both help with tougher enemies and bosses. Problem is with this system is that if you die, you lose all of your powers and pretty much need to start the whole game over. In the second stage, you need the second level of power at least to be able to push the barrels to get chests open. But if you die, you no longer have that. You're only at level one and you cannot push the barrels to open the chests to get more power. So your only choice is to remain powerless. And from there, the difficulty goes right up. Not really because the game's hard, but just because now you don't have any power. And so for the bosses, it's pretty much hit small enemies with a bubble, and then pick up those enemies and throw them at a boss. You know, the first boss was pretty easy, but the second level gave me some trouble, since I had died and had to press on without the bubble power. This here is another NES game that requires many tries and memorization to beat. I did not really have the desire to keep playing this over and over. So from what I read, there are only about five levels, and once you get good at the stages by repeating them over and over again, this game probably wouldn't be too bad to beat. I would say that overall, it was a little more fun than I expected. It's not too hard, but it can be a little bit challenging at times. Probably good for kids. So I would say that adding this to your NES collection is actually a pretty good idea if you like standard NES games from the old days. And you really need to get this if you are, or currently live with, a little girl who wishes she was Ariel. So until next time, remember, you never outgrow video games. I am Chad the Gaming Dad, and this is Dad's Games. Thanks for watching, and so long everybody.